training up on the screen, this guy here is probably going to be better. So, first of all, some terminology associated with the skull of the shark. The part that holds the brain is called the chondrocranium because it's made of cartilage, the cartilage skull. We're going to talk a lot about skulls this semester. Your second exam is going to have a lot of skull stuff on it. Lecture exam. First lab exam, obviously, it'll be, it's all bone, so this will be on there. But this is the chondrocranium, and then what we see here is called splanchnocranium. Now, splanchnic is another way of saying visceral. So, like you'll recall that we talked about the pharyngeal arch as being part of the visceral skeleton or splanchnocranium. That's why those terms are used interchangeably. In fact, if you took um, embryology, anyone have embryology? So remember splanchnic mesoderm was the mesoderm associated with the visceral organs? Yeah. So splanchnic refers to visceral. So you got an edge on everyone. So in jaw vertebrates, nathostomata, as you recall, the gill arches gave rise to the jaws. So lampreys don't have jaws. All of their arches, their, all their visceral skeleton will be for breathing. And you think about visceral, visceral activities, breathing, eating, so it kind of goes together. But in our shark here, the jaws and the gill arches are all part of the branchial skeleton. I'm sorry, the visceral skeleton. So the first visceral arch became the jaw, and that's called the mandibular arch. And with our shark, there's still some, actually, let me get something else real quick. I'm sorry. With the shark, um, there's two cartilages making up the visceral, the first visceral arch, the mandibular arch. Yeah, I don't think it'll be the magnifier to see any of these. I'll get a smaller one. So once, see here you actually still have skin on there. So here it is skinless. And so the top cartilage has got a real heck of a name that you're going to hate. Palato terigo quadri. The second one you like much better. So palato, palate for the roof of the mouth, if that helps. Terigo for wing life. And this kind of looks like a wing coming down. And quadrate because one of the articulating structures coming off right here in the corner is called the quadrate process. So palato, terigo, quadrate. The lower jaw is made up of what's called Meckel's cartilage. The only thing you got to remember there is capital M because it's named after the person who identified it. So that's a lot easier than palato, terigo, quadrate. One of the things you'll see is that palato, terigo, quadrate is sometimes called palato, terigo, um, palato quadrate. But you actually want to put the whole name in there because when we're looking at the differences between the jaw of the shark and the mud puppy, you're going to see how the plato terigo quadrate in the mud puppy is two bones, plato pterygoid and quadrate. And so that will make it easier for you to trace that and remember it if you learn the full name. So there's the first visceral arch. These little processes here, by the way, you'll see they stick in the orbit. Then in their little mud puppy, I'm sorry, in your um, dogfish, they look like shark fin going into the orbit, and they call the orbital processes because they go in the orbit, which makes sense when you think about it. All right, so then our second arch became a structure to support the jaw called the hyoid arch. And so when we look at our hyoid arch, it's a little hard to see here because here's platoterigo quadrate, here's our quadrate process, here's Meckel's cartilage. It's kind of stuck in here, which is one big disadvantage. If I tilt this up, you can see that the hyoids slip behind the lower jaw. So right here is basihyal, and curving around along with the lower jaw is serratohyal. And then there's a little piece that, let's see, that's right here behind the quadrate process. Um, I'm not sure how well you can see that, I'm sorry. But right there, that is hyomandibular. And so the hyomandibula actually serves to anchor or brace the jaws against the chondrocranium. Okay? And we think about it, that's one reason why sharks' jaws work differently than yours. You can only open up your lower jaw. You can't work your upper jaw. But you know sharks can. 
We've all seen Shark Week again and again, right? And the reason why they can do that is because their upper jaw is not attached to the skull. It's attached to the hyomandibular that in turn attaches it to the skull. And that's why we see the second visceral arch becoming another part of the jaws, the hyoid arch. Now we're on the gill arches, and this goes to where a few people had trouble yesterday or the other day, numbers. First visceral arch, jaws, second visceral arch, hyoid, third visceral arch, first gill, second visceral arch, I'm sorry, sorry. Um, fourth visceral arch is the second gill, and so on. So if we count gill arches, there's five pairs. In terms of visceral arches, there's seven. So you gotta keep that in mind. That's why you saw the two number system in your book. One is for the number of visceral arches, or arches of the spine from cranium, and the other is the number of gill arches. So when we look at our gill arches, here's the first one with the white pin in it. First, second, third, fourth, fifth. Sharks have typically five pairs of gill arches. There are six gill and seven gill sharks, but most sharks have five pairs. When we look at the parts here, um, I'll try to walk you through them again. This is the easy way to see it. But right along the midline, we have two cartilages that all the gill arches attach to. These are called basi branchials because they're the base of the gill, the foundation. And then we got these short little gill arches connecting the basi branchials to the rest of the gill arch. These are called hypobranchials. Hypo beneath, right? Since they're sitting right here, they're beneath the gill chamber. Then we got these guys that are really big with white pins on one, and they come and curve up to the side. And it's a little hard to see, and maybe the last one shows it better, but they curve up to the side like a pair of horns, like bull's horns. And those are called serratobranchials. Serrato meaning horn, right? Like triceratops, three horns on face. I know the names don't sound really as cool when you translate them. So serratobranchial. And then I don't think we're going to see much more because of the way this is stuck on its platform. But let's see if I can, might be able to show it to you. It's a little snowy. Can't get sick from it. Try to switch this guy for just a moment. See if I can do this without being a total mess. So yeah, I may have borrowed that. Let me see if I, just, if I can do it without getting too much reflection. How's that looking? Okay, so yeah, that's, it's kind of weird because where I'm pointing is not where the light is here. Now my hand's in the way, so let's see if I can make this work. Glad that'll be on YouTube forever. So here's our serrato branchial. And you'll notice that it's curving towards the backbone. And the part that's curving towards the backbone above here that's epibranchial, epi being on top. So the last one really shows it well. Serratobranchial curving like a bull's horn, a little divot right there, and then curving back towards the head, epibranchial. Here, we'll point. Let's see if I can point that out with this too. Yeah, that works. There's a serrato. Yeah. So serratobranchial, and then, oops, let's get right up on top of it. Serratobranchial and then epibranchial curving. Now the last one's really hard to see because coming off the epibranchial is another piece that's right up against the vertebral column. And I really can't show it to you on this one. The only one that shows it really well is that big shark by Ismail. But you'll see another set curving back along the vertebral column called pharyngeal branchial. But fortunately that one's just too much to try to show you through these specimens. But those are your different uh, gill arches and gill arches or branchial, branchial referring to gills, the breathing, versus visceral arches, okay? So that should help a little bit. Now the next thing is condyle and epicondyle and long